So good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional, uh, morning devotional. Uh, this morning I'm going to continue in our series on Psalm 51, uh, three steps in a motion or a movement toward God. How do you want to, if you want to grow closer to God, uh, Psalm 51 is a good outline for how to do that. And we'll be getting into that Psalm in just a few moments, but let's, uh, let's bow our heads to begin our uh, morning devotional uh, together. Father, we thank you so much once again for your love for us. And I thank you for all of those who are watching this clip, this video clip right now. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them where they are, that you would give them a good day today, that you would help them to be um, full of your joy, full of your peace. God, for those around us who are suffering, we ask your incredible grace to fall upon their lives. We ask your peace to shower them with a contentment that knows that you are with them. For those who do not yet know you in Henderson or across the globe, Father, we pray for salvation, that your son Jesus Christ would make himself real to them. And especially in these days where people are thinking about mortality more than they were just a few uh, months ago, we ask God your grace, help us to be part of the revival that will come by the power of your Holy Spirit as a result of people looking towards you. We ask your graces in these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So once again, it's good to be with you this morning, and um, I wanted to continue looking at Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a psalm of David, King David, uh, where he has been uh, confronted about his sin with Bathsheba by the prophet Nathan. And as he hears Nathan uh, basically say, you are this man, you are the sinner, you are the one who did this. He looks at, at himself, the first, the first few verses of Psalm 51 reflect his response. He looks inside. And he says, yes, I know I've done wrong. I've got sin in my life. So he looks inside. And then he doesn't stop just looking inside. He looks up. He looks up at God. And he asks God for the redemption and the grace and the forgiveness and the salvation that comes uh, from God's mercy. And so he receives uh, God's grace. So he looks inside. He looks upward. And he also looks, and this is, I wanted to read the, the rest of the passage for you. Um, in Psalm 51, verses 13 to 19, if you have your Bibles there with you, this is the part of the psalm where he looks outward. So he looks in, he looks up, and then he looks out. And this is, uh, again, a great outline for how to respond uh, and grow closer to God. So Psalm 51, verse, starting in verse 13, if you'll read along with me. This is the psalm of David. He says, Then I will teach, after he confesses his sin, after he receives forgiveness from God, he says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will not or, or, so that sinners will turn back to you. And this is that's the key verse in this, verse 13. So he's received, he's he's been reconciled to God, he's looked at himself, he's looked up, but now he he looks outward to other uh, people and to the needs around him, which is uh, a vital part of Christianity and growing close to God. We can look at ourselves, and we can look at God, and we can have that communion with God, but we, the, the call of Christianity, the call of religion, true religion, is to um, let your relationship with God extend outward as well as upward. So he says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Then he says, Deliver me from guilt of bloodshed. That's, he's talking about Uriah the Hittite. O oh God, you who are, my, who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. So here he's saying that uh, after he's received his forgiveness, he will, he will communicate it. He will communicate it in his praise and in his songs, and he will sing of God's righteousness and, and declare God's praise. Then he says, you do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. So he's thinking again, beyond himself. He's thinking about his community. He's thinking outward, okay? Um, then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous and burnt offerings whole, uh, offered whole. Uh, then bulls will be offered to you, uh, be offered on your altar. So, uh, God, David is, has received his, his, has admitted his guilt, received his forgiveness, and now he goes to a portion of prayer that includes other people. 
and that is an outreach uh, oriented part of his prayer and that is the call to all of us uh, when we as we discover the wonderful graces of knowing Jesus and many of you who are watching us uh, are know you know what I'm talking about when you've accepted what God has for you and you've come to a, a moment a time of repentance and you've turned to God and you've re you received his great mercies and his great graces um, there comes a time in the life of the Christian when we start stop thinking about what God will do for us and start thinking about what God will do through us and that's ma many of us that's the call uh, of God to the church right now we can as we're being isolated and we're thinking about our lives and we get the, we get in these uh, modes where in these days where we're thinking about our problems and our issues and the frustrations that we have and we're not really thinking about our community and and that's the call of the Christian that when we've reconciled to God when we when we are right with God the next step is to offer that same rightness uh, to other with other people and so the call uh, for this passage of scripture as drawing closer to God is to remember that as we draw closer to God it's not just only about us there are other people in desperate need of God's mercies and graces and so our prayer uh, today will be extended to them as well so let's bow our heads together in response to that Father we as we sit around our coffee tables and our living room couches and we've been isolated for so long now and we're starting to feel the frustrations and the isolations and the loneliness of, of being apart. Help us to be mindful that we have a, a, a deep-seated relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, and we are in communion with the God of the universe. And there's much to be thankful for in our lives. And let us be people who don't uh, stay turned inwardly and don't stay focusing on praising you and let you, the, the communion between us and you. And those are wonderful things. But let us, at some moment in our lives, and especially in these days just ahead, turn to the needs of others around us and include them in our prayers, our thoughts, and the things that we do uh, as we minister to them to draw them closer to Jesus. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Chapel Hug, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember to keep others, uh, to, to include others in the blessings that you receive from God. Have a blessed day.